Derby has a whole range of shops, bars and restaurants for all of us people to use. From, we've got the modern day Westfield right back to this unique, lovely area of the city uh, known as the Cathedral Quarter. Welcome to Derby's Cathedral Quarter. Our Disabled People's Diversity Forum have made this film to help businesses with older properties make their premises more accessible. I think we've been quite surprised in making this film how many buildings are accessible, but there's just a few that need a few tips. Access isn't just about ramps or steps, it's about broader things such as induction loops, and facilities for visually impaired people. Often these things don't cost a lot. So access makes a happy shopper, so join us on our trip through the Cathedral Quarter to see where you can shop as a disabled person and get some tips if you're a business to make your business that little bit extra. Rushing past, you might be forgiven for thinking this place isn't accessible, but Roy Jones and Janet Warner tell us a different story. Do you know, Roy, I think this is lovely, don't you? I can get here with my wheelchair. We've got a lovely automated door. And I didn't realise until I actually came to a funeral here and went into the upstairs part of this building how well they've done it for an old building. And to have a lovely ramp like that to get in, wonderful. Smashing, just what we did. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it's quite nice as well to be able to come into a place in the city centre and actually have, be able to hold a conversation. There's music in the background, it's not too loud. I'm not, I don't think I'm silly enough to say that you can't have music because I know our shops are just breaking the atmosphere. But this is just right, I can communicate with you. Uh, would have been more helpful if it had been a loop on the actual desk itself, on the you know, counter, but having said that, certainly yes, it's a pleasure to be here and it makes a change. Jack Rabbits hadn't heard of an induction loop for hearing impaired customers. This is a relatively inexpensive device to help with getting rid of background noise. But Roy Jones and CamTad came to the rescue. CamTad is our local help and practical support group for anything to do with hearing impaired people. Roy's help was eagerly accepted by most of the businesses we visited. When we set the business up, it was really important that we made sure that we've got disabled access throughout the building because we understand that there are a lot of needs for this throughout the city and whilst a lot of buildings don't necessarily lend themselves to it, there are many things you do to make easy adaptations so that you can make it more accessible to everyone. Um, for instance, our washroom behind me here, um, because we were sort of um, limited with the building and its structure in itself, what we've actually done is made some modifications to ensure that if it is required for the use by a disabled person, we can give over the whole washroom space to them and give them all of that area. So by using it and thinking about it differently, we've managed to make it accessible to them also. New buildings are relatively easy to make accessible. But what about the challenges of a Grade 2 listed building? The Cathedral Quarter Hotel is a great example of being creative where disabled people's access is concerned. I think the, the biggest challenge was is obviously the building itself. Being so old, being built in 1870, it obviously wasn't something that was remotely considered then. And um, the original spec of the building was largely geared around steps, as you see from the mm -hmm. staircase. So we had to kind of work around that. A lot of our, um, our, our best features are the, the, the age of the building and the original features of the building. So um, keeping them was of paramount importance, but at the same time, you know, we, we needed to be 100% you know, accessible for, for disabled guests. So it meant building ramps where necessary, it meant putting consideration into where to put the disabled bedrooms, it meant putting consideration into um, how best to, to make these guests feel at home in terms of, of having accessibility, in terms of having people on hand to, to assist where necessary. In our disabled rooms we have uh, alarm points that, that guests are able, if there's an emergency, to pull a cord which alerts reception immediately by noise and visually that the, there's a problem in that room and, and that gives us a chance to, to rush straight to the room to make sure everything's okay. We have various facilities that we can use to, to aid um, so with people, for example, we have um, buzzers that can be put under the pillows overnight in case of a fire alarm or in case the, the night porter needs to ring the, the, their phone, it's attached to their phone. Um, we have hearing loops in the lift, we have, um, it's obviously, it's, the lift is super visually um, impaired people as, as well as um, people with hearing impairments. It's about 
not only the legal aspect and making people feel comfortable and safe, but it's also um, the fact that we are a hotel business. It's about making feel people feel at home and feel comfortable. And, and that's what our entire business is about, ensuring that people feel comfortable no matter what. On, on a business level, it, it's, it's vital to our trade for our trade because um, we, if we have a wedding or a large event, um, everybody needs to be able to attend that wedding, so we need to be able to get to all the areas that that wedding is being held in. Um, if we don't have that, that will obviously, it's not only a, feel a, a, a moral issue, but also it's going to stop people holding that piece of business with us because um, you know they, they, they need everyone to come to, to, to the wedding, to the event. Bennett's may be the oldest department store in the world, but that doesn't stop them being accessible. Here's what the manager, Ian, had to say. And he was very interested in having an induction loop too. Every old building is, uh, presents challenges, but those challenges are there, the problems are there to be overcome, and every, every problem should have a solution. The simple things that we started off looking at was just um, access around the stock and keeping the gangways of, of a decent width, making sure the floors were clean and tidy, making sure that things were, were that signage was good for, uh, for visually impaired people, and just keeping things as simple as possible so that it doesn't confuse the issue. We're, we're very fortunate to have um, a top quality zest uh, restaurant inside our building in a brasserie, but it is accessible only through stairs because it's, uh, there's no space to put a lift in, with the, there's, there's no space for a lift shaft. But we've got two eating places, so we've um, devised a system where somebody can get wheelchair access to the tea rooms and then order from the zest restaurant menu and then the food can be brought over, cooked fresh to order and brought over and served to them at their table in the tea room. So we can serve all, cust all food to all customers in, in an accessible wheelchair environment. We met with some members of our Disabled People's Diversity Forum so they could share with us what makes them a happy shopper or not so happy. Here's their experiences. Going to the bus station to see if there was any buses that would sort of come up this end. So, there you can get one going down. I said, Well, that's the easy bit. So, it's going up, there's a hard bit. I said, So, you know, that's so I had to get a taxi. Yeah. Yeah. The Cathedral Port is actually working alongside um, the bus stations, and the bus companies trying to get buses back up into this area because obviously they all go to the bus station now. Yeah. It's centralised, it's not good for people in wheelchairs and so on. You know, so. That's, that's the worst thing, I think, for me at the start. Shopping experience for me would be um, getting eye contact um, from the staff. That way we sort of communicate better. I can see their lip movement, they can see me. That is what makes a good shopping experience for me. And also being able to hear them as well. Getting around this area here is not really good because even coming down now today, there's a few A-boards there, which if there's people coming at me and I have to move to rather uh, particularly to the red, I'm most certainly going to hit the A-boards. There's no doubt about that because I can't, you can't get out of the way of them. And if you do that and you suddenly change direction, you're knocking into people and of course you upset people by doing this. What would have used them of course if there had been some form of signage to say what assistance is available, whether it be a simple paper sign saying Bell available, please ring for disabled access through to the symbol for hearing impairment, for sight impairment. But walking around here, there's nothing. And I think that's a, a positive thing. If you are proactive with regard to disablement uh, empowerment, then promote it from the rooftops. Let everybody know about it because then we can show best practice. Loud music in shops can be very difficult for many shoppers. In fact, there's been articles in the media recently about that but for hearing impaired people it can make them not bother with the shop unless you are Roy of course. Thank you very much. No problem. I think this shows that cooperation is the biggest key word that it was too loud there are things in here that I would very much like to buy but I would be put off to the fact that it was overloading my hearing aids producing a level that I just couldn't hear so this is a fantastic opportunity for cooperation and very positive issues come out of this, the, the willingness to turn the volume down, which is great in my opinion. 
Sometimes it's hard to attract the sales assistant's attention if there's a step to the shop. So take a tip from the book cafe and provide a bell. Not a lot of money that can avoid losing sales. I was going to buy a dress I'd seen advertised in the paper from this shop, but no one came to assist me. English Heritage and the City Council can provide some help with new shop fronts. The grant scheme has been in existence for the past three years and has provided much needed regeneration to the uh, city centre. Uh, one of the benefits of the, the many benefits of the grant has been to create accessible access um, to historic buildings um, that were previously inaccessible to disabled people. Here we've got a, a specific example, there used to be a step and is now uh, the, the access has been ramped and, uh, and the door has been widened to allow uh, an easier access. Until we made this film we've got no idea that one of the Cathedral Court arrangers uses basic sign language. Here's Robbie Nash from the British Deaf Association has to say about access for deaf people. When a deaf person comes into your shop, I don't assume that all deaf people are the same. All deaf people have varying communication modes or hearing losses. Maybe you're able to recognise a deaf person because they're wearing um, hearing aids or whether they're using sign language. Or maybe you ask them if they need any help but they're not responding. You could actually tap the person gently on the arm and ask them if they need any help and maybe then they'll say, oh, I'm deaf. But don't panic. You know, continue to ask what they need, maybe write things down or use simple gesture. For example, you know, they want something over there, you can show them where the item is. Or ask the person how they'd like to communicate with you. Disabled People's Diversity Forum are very proud of the city and very keen to promote the Cathedral Quarter. They're keen to work in partnership to promote what it has to offer, but also is keen to ensure that it's accessible to all residents in the city and visitors to ensure that everyone can enjoy the benefits. So it's been keen to work in partnership to demonstrate what they've been doing right and where they can make a number of improvements. And hopefully, by working together, will make the Cathedral Quarter a better place for people within the city and visitors to enjoy the offer that Derby has. We're at the end of our shopping journey now, but we hope we have opened the doors to many other disabled people who want to visit this lovely area and also given some food for thought to the local businesses to make their businesses even more welcoming to disabled people. We've met some fantastic businesses along the way and thank you so much for all your support and that wonderful Cathedral Quarter welcome.